In this lecture, we're going to examine how to combine our capacitors when capacitors are placed in series or adjacent to one another in our electric circuit. So to begin, let's look at the following two electric circuits. In electric circuit number one, we have two capacitors C1 and C2 placed in series or adjacent to one another. Now notice that in electric circuit number one, we don't have a battery. Now that means there is no electric potential difference or voltage difference in our electric circuit. And so electrons will not flow. And because electrons will not flow, there won't be a charge buildup across capacitor number one and capacitor number two. So the overall charge on these two guys will be zero. So now let's jump to electric circuit number two. In this electric circuit, we basically took this guy and incorporated a battery that has a voltage of 12 volts. Now let's see what happens. Well now there is an electric potential difference in our electric circuit. In other words, our electrons will flow from a higher electric potential to a lower electric potential. So our electrons will flow from our anode all the way around to our cathode. Now that means by convention, current will flow in this direction, even though our electrons are flowing in this direction. Now, let's examine more closely how our electrons flow from this end all the way to this end. Well, they begin our anode and they move along this path until they reach our first plate. And at this plate, they can jump across because there is a dielectric between these two plates. And that means electrons begin accumulating on this side of our parallel plate. And that means this accumulation of a negative charge creates repulsion. And this repulsion repels the electrons on this side of our parallel plate. And so electrons begin moving along this wire all the way to this parallel plate. And once again, the accumulation of charge, of negative charge on this side causes the electrons to move from this plate all the way to our cathode. And that's exactly how electrons move within the following electric circuit. Now, I want to find, or suppose we were given this electric circuit and we were asked to find the charge on this guy and the charge on this guy when our two capacitors are fully charged. Now before we get into that, let's look at the following aspect. Notice that we go from, <coughs> from zero charge to some unknown charge. And recall that there is a law called the conservation of charge that states charge is conserved. So that means if we go from a zero charge, we must end up at a, <coughs> at a zero charge. So let's see what happens on this, on this uh, capacitor number two. So on this end, we have a charge buildup of say negative Q. And that means the magnitude of the buildup of charge on this plate is exactly the same. So if this is negative two, this is positive two. And that means if this is positive two, this guy must be negative two, and this is positive two. So altogether, if you add up the guys, we get two Q minus two Q gives us a zero net charge. So we, th we see that in this section, our charge is also zero. So our law of conservation of charge is not broken, it holds. Now, let's go back to trying to find what the charge is on capacitor and on this capacitor. So we just saw that our charge on this guy must be exactly the same, must have the same magnitude as the charge on this capacitor. So with those two facts, let's look at the following equations. Now, actually, before we look at the equations, let's see what we want to do. Well, we want to replace the two capacitors with a single capacitor. And we want to ask ourselves, what should the capacitance be of this new capacitor? In other words, we want to go from this picture, from this guy, to this picture, where C1 and C2 has been replaced by one capacitor, C nu. And you'll see why in a second we need to go about it in such a manner. Now notice that Q1 and Q2 are the charges on C1 and C2. And from the formula Q equals CV, we know that Q on C1 is simply C1 times V1. 
and Q on C2 is simply Q equals C2 times V2. In other words, the charge on this guy is exactly the same. But if C1 and C2 are not equal, that means their voltages are not equal. So we can rearrange these two formulas to get us this formula and this formula. In other words, voltage across this guy is Q over C1 and voltage across this guy is Q over C2. So, notice that we have a different voltage here and a different voltage here. If our capacitance C1 and C2 are not equal, that means to get back our voltage, our 12 volts, we have to add V1 plus V2. Now, let's go back to explaining why we want to combine this C1 and this C2 to form our C nu. Notice that we only have two equations and we have three unknowns. In other words, we know C1, we know C2. What we don't know are the Q's and we don't know our V1 and V2. So we have three unknowns and two equations. And mathematically, that's impossible to solve. So the reason we want to go from this system to this system or from this electric circuit to this electric circuit is because we want to get one equation with one unknown so that we can solve for that unknown. And we'll see what happens at the end. So, like I said, 12 volts or V total, V of our battery is equal to V1 plus V2. So let's set that equation up. V battery equals V1 plus V2 which equals, remember, from this equation, we could just take this guy and plug it into here, we can take this guy and plug it into here. And so what is V battery? V battery is simply the charge, which is the same for this guy and this guy, over what? Well, it's over C nu. It's over what we want to form. So Q over C nu is equal to Q over C1 plus Q over C2. And now notice, we have a Q term in each of these terms. And so we can take a Q out and we get the following equation. Q in parentheses times 1 over C nu equals 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. So what this is, is this equation which we, we wrote here gives us the capacitance of our C nu. In other words, now, <coughs> now we have one equation Q equals CV, we know our C, which is the C nu, we know our V, because when we're dealing with one capacitor, the voltage across this guy is the same as the voltage across this guy. So now we can simply uh, solve by simply multiplying C times V to find our Q. For example, suppose our C1 and C2 were both 2. So two say two microfarads. That means to get our C nu, we simply do one over two plus one over two gives us one over one. So our C nu must be one. So we replace this guy with one and we know our voltage across this guy is 12 volts. In other words, when this is fully charged, it's the same, it has the same voltage as this guy. So we get 12 volts times one microfarad gives us the charge. So we find that our charge is simply 12 microcoulombs. So we were able to find our charge using this guy, but we would have no way of finding our charge using this electric circuit. Because in this electric circuit, we have three unknowns, Q, V1, and V2, and only two equations. Now note that whatever the charge is on this guy, the same charge exists on this C1 and this C2. So if C1 and C2 are both two microfarads, our charge on this guy, this guy, and this guy are 12 mi microcoulombs. 